Hi everybody, this is Noelle with Petite Garden Centers and we are going to do a Petunia Spotlight today. And with Spotlights, we just give you all the care information and details of these plants so you can be successful. And you're probably thinking, Noelle, I've grown petunias before. They do fine for me, but I'm going to tell you there are a lot of things to know about petunias that will hopefully help you be even more successful than you already are. Um, first of all, to start out, sun requirements for petunias. They really appreciate that full sunlight, uh, bright direct sun on their flowers and foliage. So six or more hours of sun per day is typical. If you have that part shade condition where you have that four to six hours of direct sunlight, they usually do okay in that area as well. Just watch for the watering because, and that kind of gets to our next subject here, but watch for the watering because they cannot handle wet feet. So if you have them in part shade and wet feet, they're gonna have a problem, okay? So let's talk about soil for petunias. Petunias typically like well-drained, amended soil. That's why they do so well in hanging baskets, window boxes, container gardens, because we typically have potting mixes that drain really well. And so they thrive in that type of environment. They absolutely do well in garden beds. Just make sure that they're not sitting in water. So if it's a raised area, yep, no problem whatsoever. They love to kind of fill out, um, you know, branch out into landscape, kind of trail over walls and those types of things. They're perfect for that type of environment. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're thinking about the soil you're planting your petunias in. Uh, another thing that we talk about is the watering. And with petunias, they like to be consistently watered or consistently moist. And here's a little caveat here. They are drought tolerant and heat tolerant plants. They do great in humidity and hot areas, but your watering schedule needs to be consistent. So you can let them go slightly dry and many of them will bounce back after they're bone dry and they've totally wilted water thoroughly and they usually will bounce back for you because they're tough. But again, if you can keep your irrigation kind of consistent through the growing season, making sure that they do have enough moisture from day to day, going slightly dry before you rewater, that's always going to be the best watering conditions for them. So just something to think about if your petunias aren't doing too well, are they getting too wet? Are they getting overly dry? Something to think about. Um, next thing is of course feeding. And so with all of these new varieties and sort of hybrids, if you will, they are very vigorous. And so in order to kind of keep that, that plant actively blooming, you want to make sure that you're feeding them consistently too. And I think that's a good word for petunias is just being consistent, being regular, staying on a, a normal schedule for them. So when you're feeding, we often recommend Osmocote because literally you're applying it maybe once every six to eight weeks, every time you water, a little bit more fertilizer goes into the soil and helps those plants out. If you want to use a liquid fertilizer, no problem. Just follow the package directions for your annual plantings. It's the same thing if you want to use an organic fertilizer, no problem. Just follow the package directions as far as application rates are concerned. They will consume a lot of nutrients over the growing season. And of course, as they start to fill out, you might have to apply a little bit more often. Okay, so just, just keep that in mind. Pruning and maintenance of these plants. For the most part, your newer varieties are very, very easy care. They're self-cleaning. As I mentioned, they're drought tolerant, heat tolerant, humidity tolerant, sun tolerant. So there's a lot of pluses for them, but I feel that they always look better after they get a little trim. So normally after the 4th of July, after you have your holiday parties, is a good time to look at those petunias and say, hmm, you might need a little haircut, as Angelo Petiti would say. And at that time, what you wanna do is you just wanna prune or remove about 
20% of the plant, so all the way around. So if you can clip and clean up the entire plant, give it a little haircut. If you remove the flowers, believe me, they'll be back within days on that plant and that plant will fill out and continue to branch and grow. You might wanna give your petunias a haircut about once every six to eight weeks. So think about that on your fertilization schedule. If you clip them, give them a haircut, and then feed them, and then wait another six to eight weeks and do the same thing and feed them, they are going to be loving you. And that type of maintenance is really, really easy, just doing those two tasks at the same time. So think about that, so it's always a really good thing. I have to tell you that there are wonderful attributes about this plant. Of course, I've already mentioned their weather tolerance, their self-cleaning ability, their easy care, their tough plants. Um, but I do need to tell you that they're also excellent attractants of pollinators. So you will see everything from butterflies, bees, hummingbirds around these plants. Of course, it has a lot to do with all of the different colors. You find almost a rainbow of colors with these plants, bicolors, stripes, uh, you know, beautiful dark eyes, um, doubles even. And also keep in mind that these petunias are scented. So some varieties are more scented than others, okay? I do wanna tell you with the petunia family, they also have fairly sticky, fuzzy foliage that's actually called viscid pubescence. It's a terrible word, but again, it's because of how sticky they are. And so if you find a petunia that has a good, strong fragrance, has that sticky, fuzzy foliage, that's all a deterrent for deer and bunnies too. So some petunia varieties are fairly deer and bunny resistant because of those attributes, okay? Um, another thing that you need to know attribute wise with these guys is that they can grow at cooler temperatures. So these plants typically, we grow outside in the spring. Don't get me wrong, they're undercover, but they're not heated in the springtime for us. So we grow thousands of petunia baskets, calabrocoa baskets, which I'll mention in a little bit, in cooler temperatures. They like to be above, let's say 45 degrees. That's a good thing, okay? Um, so I wouldn't plant them until at least those evening temperatures get above that, but they do thrive in cooler temperatures and that's why they have such a long, dependable blooming season. They can start early for us, early or late spring, early summer, and they can just keep on going. And if the temperatures stay mild into, you know, late October, November, no problem. You'll continue to see them blooming. So great, easy, dependable annuals for you. Again, annual plant, right? So you're planting this, they're filling out, they're blooming, they're doing what they should be doing all growing season long. And then they do die after that. So unfortunately, that's the only bad thing. Here, I do wanna tell you they're part of the potato family, okay? So do rotate where you're planting them. If you've planted petunias in the same spot over the years and they don't seem to be thriving, it's part of that rotating your crop. So you need to make sure that you do rotate where you place petunias through the landscape. Keep that in mind as well. Well, to start out with petunias, there's lots of different varieties. And I'm gonna start over here. We have some bedding petunias and you're probably really familiar with them. You'll see them come in flats. You'll see them come in cell packs like this, okay? Your bedding petunias like this one, this is called madness, okay? The madness petunias are a floribunda type, which means that they're super floriferous, okay? However, Bedding petunias grow very, very different from some of the newer varieties that I'm gonna talk about here today, where they tend to grow up about 10 to 12 inches and tend to grow out about 10 to 12 inches. So they kind of form a ball in the landscape. And you can use these in containers too, it's fine, but they won't give you that trailing, spilling effect out of containers that you normally learn to expect 
from some of the newer varieties of petunias. So these are true bedding types, okay, that give you upright, um, you know, interest. You have to pinch these. These are the types of petunias that you need to clean and pinch and deadhead in order to keep them looking really nice and tidy. So if you are okay with that, a bedding petunia is gonna be the thing that you want. They do have scents to them as well. They are sticky like normal petunias are. So you'll find that. This is another series that we grow in flats. Again, it's another bedding petunia type. This one's called Dreams. And Dreams, actually, this is the waterfall mix, beautiful blues and whites and purples. But this is what they call a grandiflora type. So just meaning larger flower, again, funnel form or trumpet shaped flower, absolutely wonderful for the pollinators, but you can already tell how they're growing taller in this mix. So again, they are more of a bushy, taller type that you have to pinch and deadhead, okay? To kind of keep more tidy, if you will. Now, the next type that you may or may not be familiar with is the wave petunia. So we have them right through this section here. Again, rainbow of colors with the wave petunias. They were developed in the mid 90s. And what, it was great because at the time I was over at SeaWorld and these petunias were the type of petunias you could plant, you know, space them out really, really nicely, two to three foot apart, and they would just fill a bed area. And it was amazing for growers and landscapers alike, we were loving the wave petunias because they do such a good job in the ground. They are a petunia that was developed from seed. So you'll see them have kind of that undulating habit that comes out. They're self-cleaning, so they do what they're supposed to do. They grow great in hanging baskets. They trail over, spill over, no problem. They can be a filler and a thriller plant in pots and so forth. They do wonderfully, okay? There's nothing wrong with wave petunias. They're a great petunia. They're just a little bit older and they don't have as many colors and the breeding that super petunias do. So as I'm making Taylor move from side to side, you see all of these super petunia varieties. Super petunias are from proven winners, okay? And these petunias, again, like the waves, self-cleaning, big, beautiful colors, but you are going to see more variety, more color, more disease resistance, a little bit better habit and growth from these plants because these all come from cuttings, okay? So they're not necessarily produced from seed, they're produced from cutting other plant material, okay? Um, and you will see, as you can tell, all different colors here. With super tunias, there's three basic families. There is the Vista family, which is fairly uh, vigorous and large, more like um, you can grow them in the landscape. They'll do really, really well. Um, they grow anywhere from 12 to 24 inches tall and about 24 to 36 inches wide. And I should have mentioned waves are much more prostrate. So anywhere from let's say six inches I usually don't see them get much taller than that, but about six inches to 12 inches, two to three foot uh, long, okay, or wide um, with that. But uh, Supertunia Vista, okay, is gonna be that larger family. So big flowers, big trumpet flowers, and lots of different colors but usually our favorite is bubble gum. So bubble gum is right behind me here. It's a bright, clear pink, really, really beautiful. Um, and bubble gum you'll see all over the community, municipalities, everybody loves bubble gum because it's such a great grower, okay? Lots of varieties to go with that. Um, the next is the standard, okay? So the standard supertunia is usually around that six to 12 inches mark. And again, right around 24 inches in length, maybe a little bit more or less. Um, but again, great fillers, great spillers. You see them in hanging baskets and combination planters as well. Beautiful, beautiful colors. 
There is a third variety that's called mini Vista, okay? So the flowers are a little bit smaller than the standard petunia, and they look kind of like calibrachoas, if you will. But these guys are much better attuned or adaptable to landscape beds, gardens, and also containers where the calibrachoa really don't like to be in garden beds, okay? And I'll tell you a little bit in that in just a moment. But so the mini vistas, you're going to see a little bit smaller flower, but still very profuse growth. And they grow very similarly to the standard supertunia. So you have six to 12 inches of height typically, and about two foot or more, a little bit less than, um, you know, in width with these guys. So lots of colors, folks. The one that I forgot to show you is there are just a few doubles in this series. And this is Sharon. And Sharon is a lovely striped pink and white double. You can tell beautiful double flowers here. And again, she's a, a standard super petunia, but she's got that doubled flower form. So really, really beautiful. I wanted to show you just a couple of other petunias that have kind of come on the market that again, are good performers, but very unique in their colors. And, and you can tell there's lots of different coloration here, stripes and so forth. But as we get closer, I wanted to show you these guys. So first of all, I'm gonna show you this one. I do think uh, this is part of the Amore series, A-M-O-R-E. And I think this is King of Hearts, I'm almost positive, where you have the white petunia, but you see those red markings make a heart shape, hence the name Amore. These petunias you'll find, we do grow them in hanging baskets. And again, they're kind of a filler, spiller type of petunia that will grow um, right around like the 10 inch mark uh, height wise. And then they'll fill out usually to about 24 inches wide, okay, as they branch out. But again, self-cleaning variety, beautiful colors, and I should say bi colors, and they all have that distinctive heart shape on their uh, flower. Another one that has kind of come onto the market that you'll see here, this is part of the headliner series and this is called Night Sky. And this was one of the first ones to come out where you see that dark purple, velvet purple, but it has the bright white spots in it like stars. And so we're starting to see petunias with a lot of different modeling and variegation as well. Again, these grow similarly to like the Amore series or like the Supertunia. Again, growing upright about 10 inches or so, trailing down to about 24 inches. So um, really great performers, easy care, self-cleaning, so low maintenance, no problem whatsoever. Now we have a combo here as well. So there is a newer, uh, if you will, genus of petunia. It's called a pet koa. And it is actually a hybrid cross between a petunia and a caliber koa, hence the name pet koa. And what happens with these kind of interspecific crosses is that they get the best attributes from both families. So with the petunias, they get these beautiful, large flowers, lots of different colors, um, definitely some cold hardiness, again, from Calibrachoa and Petunia. And they're not quite as sticky as your average Petunia is. Um, so they get that from the Calibrachoa. They really don't have the stickiness and the fuzziness that your standard Petunia does. But again, just beautiful color shaping hardiness that you don't find in some of the other Petunia family. So watch for Petcoa most popular series that we grow is called Super Cal. Um, so look for those. We do have them in hanging baskets and there's a lot of kind of unusual fall colors with this series that come in sort of late summer and early fall too. So keep your eyes open for that. We're gonna wander over to the Calibrachoa and we just wanted to show you again, Calibrachoa is different. It's a different genus of, of um, miniature petunia, if you will. We kind of call them million bells. Watch yourself, Taylor. I don't want to get caught. But you can see 
all the different colors all the way down this table. And what's interesting about the Calabracoa family is that the foliage is much smaller, much finer. Again, they're a little bit pubescent or hairy, but they don't have the stickiness that petunias do, okay? The flowers, of course, are smaller, but very, very profuse and will bloom just as long as petunias will bloom. They're self-cleaning. There's double varieties. There are varieties that have a really um, like modeled or star flower on them. This is the Holy series when you see a lot of modeling and striping on the flower. Uh, the Punch series I'm gonna show you is something with a darker, a flower with a darker throat. I'm just gonna pull these out. But when you see that dark ring in the inside of that flower, that's gonna be part of the punch series. So this is like pomegranate punch, but there's grape punch, there's all different kinds and, and colors. And then you're gonna see a lot of bicolors through here. Oh my gosh, look at honeyberry, beautiful blend of colors beautiful pastels. Um, so with Calabracoa, you have even more selection. Now here's the key with these guys. Don't plant them in the ground. They need excellent drainage. So you want to use them in container gardens. So it could be your hanging baskets, your window boxes, your mixed containers, no problem whatsoever. They really need excellent drainage and they're slightly sensitive with pH. So that's another reason why we grow them in potting mixtures and so forth. Just slight acidity is what they like, which is it's pretty typical when you're growing in a potty mix that you have peat moss and you have um, shredded pine hydrofiber in those, those mixtures. So again, Calabracoas, all different colors available. A Little bit more compact habit, as you can tell. Some are a little bit more mounded than others. Some are very prostrate, but normally I would say you wouldn't get anything over six to eight inches high, usually much lower. And again, trailing wise, probably around 18 to 24 inches when they do spill over. Now, don't get me wrong, Proven Winners grows all of these super bells of what you're seeing here, but there are many, many other breeds and types of the million bells or calabracoa type flowers that you'll see in hanging baskets and mixed containers. So there's just so many colors, too many, too many to name. Okay. So basically that's petunia in a nutshell that you have your standard petunias. You start with your bedding types. Waves are the next step up from there. If you're really looking for good coverage out in the landscape or good spilling effect in a hanging basket. If you want an increase in color choice and variegation and variety, you can move to the cutting types, which are more like the super petunia or super tunia series from Proven Winners. And then if you're looking for a little bit smaller texture, smaller flower, but again, beautiful profuse flowering, come over to the Calabracoa. Again, try to grow them in containers. That's really where they do best. And of course, sun, consistent watering, consistent fertilization, haircut, once every six to eight weeks, and they will be awesome. Enjoy.